Hey guys, I have some very good news for you. This is the very last lesson in human anatomy and physiology. After this, we're going to move on to the next section, which is about life and physical sciences. So we're going to talk about the cell, we're going to talk about the important biomolecules, genetics, Mandel's law of inheritance, so all those um, topics in the general biology and physical science. All right, now the endocrine system is not going to be uh, very long because uh, everything's really straightforward and there's not you know, a complex process involved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make a summary table to list all the important endocrine organs, endocrine glands, and their associated uh, hormones and their functions. So we're just going to go over that and hopefully this will get you ready for the T's. Okay, let's do a quick overview. So I found this diagram that has all the important endocrine glands that are mentioned in the T's study review, except for placenta. So you can ignore placenta in this diagram, but you need to know all the other endocrine glands and where they're located. So this system uh, uh, it really kind of is composed of a set of organs, right, that can secret hormones. And the hormones are going to be uh, de delivered directly into the bloodstream, right, into the circulatory system. Because usually hormones affect organs that are not uh, right next to the, the gland that secretes that particular hormone, right? So hormones usually travel pretty far to get to their target organs and tissues. So usually hormones will use the bloodstream as a way to get to other parts of the body. The next thing you need to know about hormones is that they are chemical messengers, chemical messengers. And really hormones are kind of chemical tools or chemical messengers for the endocrine system to regulate the function of other parts of your body, right? Um, so we'll talk about in the end that uh, your body is really under the control of two systems, the nervous system and the endocrine system. There are some differences, um, but those two systems will work together collectively to regulate the function of your body. Uh, here are the important glands that you may see questions about on T's. So we're going to start with some of the kind of boss glands or more kind of regulatory glands that normally regulate the other glands. So they're kind of the top tier glands. So they are located in the brain, hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, which sits right below the hypothalamus. Now hypothalamus can secrete hormones that regulate the secretion of the pituitary gland. So hypothalamus is kind of like the boss for, for the pituitary gland. And then we'll look at the specific organs, uh, the specific hormones that they secrete. Okay, so those are the kind of the top tier, the administrative level of uh, endocrine glands. There is another gland, a small one, uh, also located in the brain, and that's the pineal gland. It secretes a melatonin, which we'll mention in a second. So melatonin regulates the sleep cycle, and that's why there are some supplements on the market that are supposed to kind of help you sleep better, and those supplements usually contain melatonin. And then now you are going down the body. In the neck area, you are going to have the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. Now the parathyroid gland actually, you know, in terms of function, it has nothing to do with the thyroid gland. It's just because they, uh, the, the parathyroid gland is kind of uh, posterior to the thyroid gland because of the location. That's why we call it parathyroid gland. Okay. And in terms of the, uh, the function of the hormones they secreted, there's no, um, no association. All right, uh, now move down, we have a thymus. Now you do not need to know the specific hormones secreted by thymus. And you will see thymus is actually not on my table, on my summary table. You only need to know that thymus secretes hormones that stimulate the maturation of the T cells. Remember in the immune system chapter, we talk about the, the T cells mature in thymus, right? All right, next one is a pancreas. We talk about pancreas and the digestive system. So pancreas secretes hormones that regulate the glucose levels. 
Next one is the adrenal gland. Now there are two adrenal glands. Um, they sit atop of the kidneys. So on each side, you're going to have adrenal gland that's right on top of the kidney. Next one, that's going to be the endocrine glands that are also shared by the reproductive system. So those are going to be the gonads, such as ovary and testes. Testes. Now we know that these gonads will secrete sex hormones. So you have some major ones for each sex, which we'll go over in a second. All right, one thing I want to mention is that you will see the two summer tables I made, but the table is not all explicit, right? I only listed the important hormones that may be on T's in the table. Okay, now let's look at the hypothalamus first. Now, all the glands in this table are located in the brain, all right? Now, hypothalamus first. So hypothalamus, like I said, regulates the activity of the pituitary gland, right? So hypothalamus uh, does that by producing, releasing or inhibiting hormones. So based on the name, you know that the releasing hormones are going to stimulate pituitary gland to secrete hormones. And the inhibiting hormones are just going to do the opposite, right? Inhibit the pituitary gland to secrete hormones. Okay, now uh, hypothalamus also secretes oxytocin. Oxytocin is important for childbirth because oxytocin stimulates the contraction of the smooth muscle in the uterine wall. Um, so that's gonna you know, push the baby out, right? So uh, oxytocin is uh, critical for childbirth and also kind of induces a labor during childbirth. The next hormone this um, is a little bit less important, but since it's secreted by hypothalamus, I want to put it in there in case there's a question on this particular hormone, kind of in conjunction with the um, urinary uh, system. So this hormone is called antidiuretic hormone, which is ADH for short. So diuretic, you know, that's, uh, in, that's the increase in urine production, right? Antidiuretic, that means this hormone is going to decrease urine production. So that's going to, so this hormone is going to stimulate the kidneys to reabsorb water. So less water ends up in urine, right? So that's going to decrease the, the volume of the urine produced. All right, now moving on to the pituitary gland, it secretes quite a few hormones, right? Uh, but we are only going to kind of focus on these four hormones. These are, most of these ones uh, have been mentioned in the T's study manuals. Pituitary gland secretes growth hormone, and based on the name, you know that this hormone is critical for body growth, right? The next one, thyroid stimulating hormone. So this hormone has a very positive impact on the thyroid, right? It promotes the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormones. Next one, follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone. We talk about these two hormones in the reproductive system. And if you remember that these hormones have slightly different functions, follicle-stimulating hormone stimulate the production of uh, gametes, right? In the females, that's going to be the ovarian follicles. So it's going to uh, make or promote the uh, follicles to mature, right, so that they can release um, the oocytes inside. In males, FSH stimulates sperm production. All right, now for luteinizing hormone, it stimulates the production of sex hormones, right? Uh, in females, that's going to be mainly estrogen, but also progesterone. In male, that's going to be testosterone, right? So that's luteinizing hormone. And the last one in the brain is a little structure. If you do sheep brain that section, usually it's pretty easy to find the pineal gland. So the pineal gland, like I said, secretes melatonin, right? If you have never used this before, next time you go to a store, go to the pharmacy section and look for supplements that are used as sleep aid, and you can look at the active ingredient, uh, and it will say melatonin. Okay, now the rest of the endocrine glands in the body, 
thyroid gland very important because thyroid hormones regulate metabolism and that literally affects you know every cell in your body next one parathyroid gland uh, which secretes parathyroid hormone i don't know if you guys remember this but we did mention this hormone when we talk about the skeletal system when we talk about the bones and the calcium homeostasis so parathyroid hormone promotes the breakdown of bone tissue or osseous tissue because when the osseous tissue is broken down the calcium in the osseous tissue can be released into the blood when your blood calcium level is really low blood calcium level when this level drops out of you know outside the normal range that's going to uh, stimulate the production of parathyroid hormone. And the parathyroid hormone is going to promote the, the breakdown of bone tissue so that the calcium ions can be released from the bone tissue, get into blood and increase the blood calcium level. Now you're gonna ask why do we need a certain level of calcium level of calcium ion in the blood? A lot of processes use calcium ion. For example, in cell communication, um, the neurons use calcium ion and muscle contraction, right? Those muscle fibers also need a calcium ion. Okay, next one, adrenal gland. Uh, I kind of divided the adrenal gland hormones into two groups. And that's because these two groups are both important. They have been mentioned in the TC study manuals but um, they are secreted by different parts of the adrenal gland. For example, here, cortisol and cortisone, they are secreted in the cortex section of the adrenal gland. Now, you probably still remember from the urinary system when we talk about the cross section of the kidney, and we talk about there are two main layers, the outer layer, that's the cortex, right? And then the inner layer, so that's the cortex, and the inner layer uh, over here, I'm gonna make a different pattern, and that's the medulla, right? Uh, and it's a very similar for the adrenal gland. There are also you know different sections or, or layers, different region. So the cortex region secretes cortisone and cortisone, and those hormones are usually secreted when your body is under stress. So for example, you have to deal with you know three finals right in the final week uh, that's going to increase your stress level and that's going to promote the secretion of cortisol cortisone those uh, i call them stress hormones now those hormones will kind of uh, basically help your uh, body deal with or handle the stress by increasing glucose production because when you're under stress, usually your cells need more fuel, more energy, right? And who provides the energy is glucose. Uh, and this is going to raise your blood sugar level, right? To put, you know, really kind of uh, supply enough of glucose for the cells to go through that stress. Now, uh, the medulla part of the adrenal gland also secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are involved in the sympathetic nervous system control. Remember, these hormones will prepare your body for emergency, prepare you for this kind of fight or flight situation. So that's what those hormones do. Next one, pancreas. We talk a lot about the hormones secreted by the pancreas and what they do in the digestive system, right? So we talk about insulin, we talk about glucagon. So the information is here, you guys can go over that. I don't want to spend you know, time just repeating the same thing that I covered before. Those are the important sex hormones. And again, the sex hormones are always about reproduction, right? So they uh, are going to stimulate the development of reproductive organs and uh, gametes, right? It's either sperm or eggs. And also these uh, sex hormones are all responsible for the development of a secondary sex characteristics. All right, so that's a quick overview of all the important hormones. And uh, there are some conditions mentioned in the T study manual. I'm looking at the 2020 to 2021 study manual. I kind of included these three conditions here. So diabetes, uh, there's type one, type two. Type one is usually genetic. You are born with type two is 
uh, uh, adult onset diabetes, right? And then eat a lot of sugar from your diet, uh, and then you don't do a lot of you know exercise, you might develop uh, type two diabetes where you have this resistance to insulin, and uh, um, insulin just doesn't work very well. Um, so if you don't have enough insulin, or if you have insulin resistance, that's going to uh, disrupt the process where the cell can take in glucose molecule, right, to get energy. So that process is disrupted. So that's diabetes. Next one is a hyperthyroidism. Hyper means a high, right? So this means that your body is secreting too much thyroid hormone. So that's going to mess up a lot of processes, right, mostly related to metabolism. Uh, remember, thyroid hormones stimulating stimulate metabolism, right? If you have too much thyroid hormone circulating in your body, then um, usually that's going to make uh, a person very thin, right? Because your metabolism is high, you're burning all the calories. And usually the person is very sensitive to cold um, because a lot of fats are gone, right, by metabolism. So there's not enough insulation to maintain your body temperature. So usually a person tends to get cold very easily. Um, person gets very uh, gets irritated very easily. Gigantism, too much growth hormone, right, secreted by the pituitary gland. So the person will be abnormally big, very tall usually. So that's kind of an interesting uh, condition related to. Um, the endocrine system. All right, now let's look at some practice questions. I mean, this should be pretty easy. Like I said, the endocrine system is uh, rather straightforward, so there are not a lot of tricky questions that you can kind of ask. But they may ask some kind of application type of questions where they give you a scenario, maybe related to a disease, a condition, and then they can ask you about uh, which hormone or which uh, endocrine gland is. Uh, impaired. Okay, number one, which of the following describes the signal employed by the endocrine system? So the endocrine system affects other organs, other functions by hormones, right? Hormones are chemicals and hormones are chemical messengers. Number two, which of the following is not a gland in the endocrine system? The correct answer is the lung. Right, the, the lungs are not endocrine glands. Number three, which of the following is a hormone that mediates the fight or flight response? And that's going to be epinephrine, right? So epinephrine or norepinephrine. Endorphin is something that makes you feel good, right? For example, chocolate has substances that can stimulate the production of endorphin. So that's why a lot of people really like eating chocolate, it can be really kind of addictive. Number four, which of the following glands is found on top of the kidneys? And that's going to be the adrenal gland, right? And there's a one adrenal gland on each, uh, on top of each kidney. All right, good job, guys. So that's the end of the endocrine system and also the end of the human anatomy and physiology. You have probably completed um, two thirds of the teeth science review, so you are getting very close. Do not give up, keep going, finish the life science, finish the physical science, and then you are ready to take on the T's science section. All right, take care.